Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to some more tyre science. Yes, I know we talk about tyres a lot in this channel, but it's one of the most important things on the car. It's the part of the car that touches the track. So, yeah, if we can understand as much about the tyres, then it should help you to go a little bit faster. In this video, we're going to look at track temperatures and the effect it has on tyre wear. Now, it's something that's been discussed quite a lot just recently in various streams. Now, the only place on the game where we get told what the track temperature is is when we go into a sport mode race. It tells us the track temperature in the post-race lobby and the sort of discussion that a lot of people have is that, you know, the higher the temperature, the more it affects the tyre wear. And yeah, I kind of am of the same, well, I was certainly of the same belief before I uh, did this test. And also, you know, the impact it can also have on lap time. So the, the purpose of this video, we're going to do a test in controlled conditions. This is the test conditions here. We're at Autodromo Lago Maggiore East. We're in the Toyota 86 from Group 4, it's non bop version, very nice car to drive. Go do 10 laps around this track, tyre wear at times 4, fuel at times 1 on the racing soft tyres. I'm still using ABS week, TC is off, and I've kept the brake balance neutral. Go do 10 laps at three different uh, track temperatures in time trial because the only other place where you can actually find out the track temperature is in the sort of offline time trial. It'll tell you the track conditions and the surface water before you go onto the track. We'll drive as consistently and smoothly as possible using the same gears at each corner, using the same braking points, and yeah, we'll just be able to take a look at what impact that's having on the tyre wear towards the end. So the first run we're going to do is at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, it doesn't say track te or the temperature of the track, but it is under the track conditions part of the, the information. So we have to assume it is talking about track temperature. Uh, 20 degrees, fairly hot. It's, I mean, I think I've seen tracks up in the 30s before, but, you know, it's uh, it's not the hottest that a track's going to get in the game. So coming down into turn one. Now, before we went into this run here, I did about 10 to 15 laps in this car around the track just to get used to the, the combination. I'm, I'm pretty good at picking up sort of uh, speed fairly quickly, or when I say speed, my speed, fairly quickly and getting on top of a car and track combination in a fairly short number of laps. So I was pretty much up to, to speed with the track and car combination when I went into this test run. Uh, I'm using the Toyota 86, the non bought version. Uh, I'm using cockpit view as well just because I jumped into the cockpit view here and thought, you know, that's actually quite nice. Let's just drive in this view for something a little bit different. So I'm only going to show you half of the first lap and then half of the last lap. So we've jumped forward here to lap 10. Uh, 22.8 is our best lap so far. The tyre we are looking around about maybe what, 55, 60% on that front left tyre. That's the tyre doing the most work, although the tyre wear is fairly even across the front and uh, obviously a little bit more tyre wear at the front compared to the rear with it being an FR car. Uh, lap times have started to drop off here towards the end. Once you sort of wear one of the tyres down, around about 50% lap times do tend to drop off. And we're just going to cross the line here and gently bring the car to a stop down here at the exit of the pit lane. Now I do have the tyre temperature app running. Whilst I was doing this, I took screenshots of the tyre uh, temperature at the end of lap three at the end of lap 7 and the end of lap sev, uh, 10. So you'll be able to take a look at all that towards the end of the video. Moving on to test 2, it's exactly the same time trial conditions, only the temperature of the track now says it's 25 degrees. Absolutely everything else about the test is exactly the same as you would expect. If you're going to test something, most important thing about doing any of these tests is to make absolutely as many things as possible identical across the test and just change the one thing that you're looking to test. So everything in this test here is identical to the first one, except they're telling me the track temperature is now 25 degrees. And we'll see what kind of impact that has on the tyre wear and also the lap times. Same again as in the first test, I'll show you half of the first lap here and then we shall jump forward to the second half of lap 10. You'll be able to see the lap times, the tyre wear, and see that we bring the car to a halt in exactly the same way. 
We're coming into this tricky corner here. This is the one corner you occasionally you can lose the rear. We have a little bit of a rear sliding moment there. Tire wears at times four. It's not going to have that much of an impact. And if anything, that was only going to really affect the rear tires. So jumping forward to lap 10. Let's take a look at these lap times. A 22.7 was actually our best lap. Faster than we did in the last one. But if you, well, within the margin of error. But uh, only lap we did in the 22s, the rest of them in the 23s. And if you take a look at the sort of lap 9 there, it's a 23 6. I think we do another 23 6 here to finish. Front left tyre again doing most of the work. It looks a little bit more worn to my eye visually, even at this point. But uh, once we've done all the tests, I'll give you a proper look at the tyre wear comparison and you'll be able to see the results of that. Once again, bringing the car to a nice gentle halt so as not to affect the tyre temperatures when we take the screenshot here at the end of lap 10. And test three, temperature 15 degrees. Now, in order to get the, the track temperature that low, I did actually have to go into a different uh, time of day setting. Uh, the first two were set on the daytime setting at Autodromo Lago Maggiore East. This one is the sunrise setting. Uh, so a full 10 degrees lower in terms of track temperature compared to the last test. Obviously the shadows are a little bit different here, so I thought when I first initially jumped into this that I might be a little bit slower. Maybe to, you know, you kind of get used to just where the shadows are on the track sometimes and using them as sort of reference points, which you shouldn't really do if you're on a dynamic track, then those shadows can obviously change. But absolutely everything else about this test is exactly the same in terms of, you know, tyre wear, uh, conditions, penalty settings, you know, every, absolutely everything else. The only thing that's different about this one is the time of day setting, which I had to do in order to get the, the track temperature down that low. The wind will also be slightly different as well. That can't be helped, that's just the nature of the beast. I think it was 2.2 uh, meters a second in the first two tests and it's 1.8 in this one. It might be a slightly different direction as well, but it shouldn't have too much of an impact on anything. Looking at the lap times here as we jump forward to lap 10, you can see we have instantly gone a lot quicker than we've managed in the previous test. Not a lot quicker, but consistently quicker. So all the lap times in the, the 22 marker, uh, or the majority of them, certainly in the middle part of the lap. Uh, 22.5 as our best. And yeah, the, the track conditions, these conditions, the car was just quicker overall. There was definitely three to four temps within just the track here alone. Whether that's down to the temperature, if you look at the tyre wear in the bottom left hand corner, you can actually see that the tyre wear is a little bit better than the first two runs. But let's uh, let's put this screen up. There's a lot of information here, so I'll talk you through it. So at the top, you just have what test run that was. 20 degrees, 25 degrees and 15 degrees. Below that, we have the tyre temperatures at the start, at the end of lap 3, at the end of lap 7 and at the end of lap 10. And at the bottom, we have the direct tyre wear comparison. And it will confirm to you and confirm to us. And it's what we kind of suspected, but it's nice, as I said, to just do the test under control conditions and just confirm it, is that the track temperature does affect tyre wear. The lower the track temperature, the better your tyre wear is going to be. Uh, fairly significant difference between 15 and 25, but there's also a decent difference between 25 and 20 as well. So I wouldn't worry too much about one degree differences uh, if you've kind of got a reference point, but once you get into that three to four degrees, you can see that we've saved a good bit more tyre on the 20 degree run compared to 25 degrees. So yeah, definitely a confirmation that the track temperature does have an impact on tyre wear. What's also quite interesting about this is we look at the track temperature numbers, sorry, the tyre temperature numbers. Lots of tyres, temperatures and tracks, all these words beginning with T. But if we take a look at the tyre temperatures, there is a direct correlation between the track temperature and just how hot the tyres get. So at 15 degrees, uh, the tyre temperatures are significantly lower at each point compared to the other two runs. In fact, at 15 degrees, you're actually struggling to get temperature into the tyres until well into the run at the end of lap three. The front tyres are just about getting there, but the rear tyres are struggling to get up to temperature. So it just reiterates that we should really be getting this information uh, into the game so that we can see what the tyres are doing and uh, alter our driving accordingly because 
you don't really know, you can see at the end of lap 7 there at 25 degrees, we've, we've overcooked the front tyres a little bit, so if we're maybe take it a little bit easier for a couple of laps, could we bring those tyre temperatures down a little bit, get the tyre wear under control a little bit, it's maybe not going to matter in a kind of, uh, certainly not maybe going to matter for race A or B, possibly not even for race C because it's only 20 minutes, but maybe if you're doing some endurance races, or if they maybe bring in some endurance races in the future, this kind of information will be important but it's, it's interesting to me there is a direct correlation between the track temperature how hot the tyres get and then the tyre wear as well so all all interesting stuff to me at the very least and another wee interesting nugget here and this is just a coincidence maybe or maybe there is something in it may have to take a little bit of further testing but I noticed that when I put this kind of chart together is that the track temperature does seem to affect fuel usage. Now I was using the same gear, revving the car out the same way for all three test runs and it does, if you look at the lap's remaining number, and it correlates across all the tests at all the points of the lap, it does seem that the higher track temperature uses a little bit less fuel. As I said, could be complete coincidence, I wasn't trying to do anything like that, but as I said, if you look through all the numbers, it seems to correlate and scale across the three test runs. So it's Maybe something to be tested in the future, it's definitely something I'm going to keep in mind, but it does look to me that higher track temperatures use a little bit less fuel, which could be significant the next time we come to a fuel race. But that's all the data put together, let's have a wee conclusions discussion at the end of the video, and the simple conclusion is that we have confirmed what we all kind of suspected anyway, and that the higher the track temperature, the worse your tyre wear is going to be. But it is nice to kind of just do it in a controlled test environment, just to kind of really confirm that and get the sort of data out there and the sort of visual confirmation. The tyre temperature information was quite interesting to me. Nice to see there's a direct correlation between how hot the track gets and how hot your tyres get as well. So the cooler the track is, the, the cooler your tyres will stay, and that seems to have like a sort of direct correlation with your tyre wear on top of that and it's nice just to see that things are kind of, you know, that they're happening the way they're supposed to do in terms of GT. GT sometimes doesn't get a fair shake of the stick in terms of being regarded as a sim, but you know, this is all kind of very, quite in-depth stuff, quite hardcore sim stuff, you know, track temperatures, tyre temperatures, tyre wear and all that's been affected by that, so it's nice, nice to see GT kind of getting things right and a nice little bit of nugget of information that's something I think hopefully we've learned certainly I wasn't aware of it and I never heard anybody talking about it is that the higher the tra track temperature possibly the better your fuel consumption is going to be my understanding of motorsport has always been that you know cooler temperatures means more air gets into the engine and you get a little bit more power so it would make sense the cooler temperatures mean you're just getting a little bit more power which means you go a little bit quicker on the track which was reflected in the lap times and uh, we use a little bit more fuel in the process. But yeah, I'm going to wrap the video up there. Hopefully it's been useful to you. Hopefully you've learned some stuff. I know I've learned some stuff along the way as well. If you have, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.